Hello, everybody. So once again, my name is Martha Alter Hines with Living the One Light. And today I'm going to record for you part two of tips for a highly Uranian time. And in part one, which I definitely recommend you go back and watch if you haven't watched it already, um, <clears throat> what I was guided and what the spirit world basically focused on in that video was was the importance of integrating ourselves as body earth body and light as one and in this video which obviously follows that video now what the component that they're wanting to bring in um <clears throat> and I'll channel probably for most of this video so it'll that it'll come through that way um but the theme what i the fe the theme i am being asked to speak to is um is then as we are integrating ourselves as earth and light as one and we're grounded and we're able to really be fully grounded in that reality then another really key component and opportunity of this time is for us to be coming into the pure alignment and energetic grounding energetic click with the light grid of existence which can mean all kinds of things. I mean, that ha that can have so many beautiful um, ripple effects. It's, it's like, what's the human word for this? It's hard to come up with the right word. But anyway, so much can come from then being both integrated as our earth body and light as one, and then clicking with that light resonance that light um electrical impulse that is us and that is the light grid of everything so so yeah so they want to channel about that but also i think they want to lead us through an exercise of doing that perhaps if you feel called to do that in whatever way is just right for you um <clears throat> And I just want to show you a teeny tiny bit of the current astrology because it it speaks to why this time is particularly alive and particularly potent as we're leading up to the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Um, so so I'm you know being asked to make these videos about you know tips for a highly Uranian time, and the main reason i would say this is a highly uranian time is because jupiter is moving to make that conjunction with uranus um <clears throat> jupiter expands things right so when it's going to be meeting it's moving toward that meeting with uranus we're already in we're already it's already close enough that the energetic is they're coming together they're already if you look in the sky where jupiter is it's basically the same part of the sky where uranus also is already like the actual beings the actual planets um <clears throat> so their energetics are already in that conjunction type of energetic together and so it's and but it's building because it's getting closer and closer so as as the conjunction as a conjunction gets closer it's you know both about letting go of the old the old the old cycle that those two planets have had but it's also about building into the resonance that's now going to be singing as the two planets together so i i was talking about this actually in the astrology course that i'm holding the other day a conjunction i think of like if you have two tuning forks and they're both and you you know you sound both of them like you strike both of them. So they're both now singing their own song and you bring them closer and closer and closer together. The, as you get to a certain point, the two vibrational sounds and vibrational existences 
will suddenly have this moment of becoming a third entity, right? So that's how I think of everything else. Um, Cause everything is vibration. Everything is energy. And that's definitely for sure true about planets, literally. So in astrology, when I think of a conjunction, that's how I'm thinking of it. And actually when I think of anything in astrology, for me, it's all about vibration and all about the energetic of it. So let me just show you um, one more layer of the astrology real quick, and then I'll drop in and just let them, let them take it away. Um, but here you go, for those of you interested in the astrology part. <clears throat> so I'm recording this video on Saturday, March 2nd, 2024. And at this exact moment, this chart is of right now. Um, like I said, we have Jupiter building toward that conjunction with Uranus. Right now, it's um, actually exactly eight degrees away from Uranus. And the exact conjunction, when they're exactly at the same place together in basic part of the sky, uh, will be on April 20th, 2024. So we have another month and 18 days until then. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, right now, uh, just in the last what week and a half, um, Venus and Mars made their conjunction in Aquarius. And Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. And then what's interesting is that Uranus is in Taurus, so and so is Jupiter. Taurus is ruled by Venus. So right now, Venus and Uranus are in what's called mutual reception. That means that um, Uranus is ruled by Venus and Venus is ruled by Uranus. So they're kind of, it's like this dance um, where they're, you know, one way I can feel into that is <clears throat> they're helping each other out. Like they're, they're holding hands in a way that's, that's, um, they're bouncing off each other. It's, it, you know, it's just a really, it's just a really interesting energetic to have that kind of a relationship. And actually right now also, um, Venus is squaring Uranus. So Venus and Uranus are in a very powerful relationship right now, just all the way around. And then Mars will be moving into a square with Uranus also. Um, yeah. So, so there's just this really fascinating and beautiful dance between essentially the Aquarian Uranian energies and the Venus, the Venusian Taurus energies. Um, right. So just throwing that, throwing that into the mix of what is here and what's alive to feel into. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, but more important even than the astrology is what is alive here for you and what's I'm just going to let the spirit world speak um, and whatever your whatever is coming through for you is is really the key. <laughs> That's the key here. Okay. Great. <clears throat> I'll be back. <clears throat> okay, hello and welcome.
So a key component of what we have been emphasizing and what we want to still emphasize today in this video is a little bit of a review and then we'll move on to a new piece, a new component. So a key, key step in this process of awakening the process of remembering the great remembering that's happening on this planet with this planet and in existence right now <clears throat> really again comes down to a remembering on an energy body level an energetic level of the oneness the wholeness, the totality of the energy body, of life itself, of ourselves, of yourself, as simply and only the one. So it's a remembering of both the dance and the dances of diversity but the reality that it all is one and all is wholeness. Everything is whole. So a key component of what has gone on in the dance of forgetting is that On an energetic level, on an energy body level, there are spindles. You can think of it like spindles of light in the energy body that in their wholeness, in their right relation within a being within your self, within any form of life, there are these light spindles that exist and that never do not exist. But in a time of forgetting, often what goes on, one component of what goes on in that time of forgetting is as though those spindles of light are present but dormant. And it's like having similar to the components of a child's building blocks of some kind all of the building blocks are there, they're all present, but they are lying in a pile or forgotten, <clears throat> but they're always there. And the divine ultimate blueprint of how these light spindles go together in any given being and any structure of life is absolutely known. It is absolutely present. It's never not present. But it's as though you could imagine that there is a blueprint of a log cabin. And the logs themselves have been lying on the ground ready to move themselves easefully and naturally and gracefully into the manifestation of themselves as this beautiful, wonderful log cabin. And the same is true 
for many forms of life, especially in the human world, but in many other forms of life also, that in the time of forgetting, it's as though the, the logs of this divine log cabin are just lying dormant, waiting until it's time for the remembering. So now is the time of remembering. And one component of this Jupiter-Uranus energy and the highly Uranian time and the highly Aquarian time, also with Pluto moving into Aquarius and being ruled by the Uranus energy in Taurus, Jupiter moving to meet with Uranus <clears throat> is that this time, this moment in the time-space continuum is a moment of those spindles, essentially, those like those logs of the log cabin suddenly just being held to naturally and easily form instantaneously into that beautiful log cabin that has always been there just possibly forgotten or not quite manifest yet even though the blueprint of it energetically was always present and even the building components of it were always there never not there and then the other part of this is that when those spindles of light again sort of equivalent to an energetic version of the logs of a log log cabin when they are held and able to come fully into that divine blueprint of the being that you truly are that any given life form truly is then once those spindles of light connect inside of you and in a sense sort of erect themselves or you know manifest themselves in the form of your inner light temple being then another thing that occurs just naturally and easefully that can occur is that then you become the, in a sense, the lightning rod or the conduit of the divine that is naturally you, that then becomes easily in alignment with the light grid of existence of the being and the light presence of the earth herself and her own light spindle earth body you become a, a conduit of earth on this light spindle level and a conduit of source itself and then through all of existence through the entire time space continuum where all of these light spindles that are you that are earth that are each other that are every form of life throughout all of time and all of space they suddenly come back online. So it's like, this is true on the microcosm level, and then it's true on the ultimate macrocosm level as well. 
<clears throat> and we'll say more about that in one minute, but we want to emphasize that the ultimate truth is simply source. It's simply the divine. So in the ultimate reality of us all and everything as source, in a sense, there's no need for light spindles because there's no need for any form of any kind. It just is. Source just is. So it's really just in the, it's just the time-space continuum that has form and shape. And it's in the time-space continuum where these, where this light grid of existence exists. So on the one hand, it's absolutely key that this light form, this light grid is able to come fully back online as you, as everything throughout all of time and all of space. That's, that's absolutely crucial because it is a key component of the great remembering time that we are all in. And yet at the same time, on the ultimate, ultimate level, none of it is true in a sense. When we're in the ultimate reality of source itself, there's a way in which those light spindles even were an illusion were just they were just part of a dance within that time space continuum so we just name that as a caveat to all of what we are describing because it's essentially the difference between the uranian aquarian energy and the piscean energy in the Pisces energy, everything is nothing, and nothing is everything. And that's the ultimate, ultimate truth, that none of this is actually, in a sense, real. But part of remembering the totality of the nothing and the everything is often a needed component of coming into that wholeness and that clicking back into that beautiful, perfect light grid of your own being, of the time-space continuum, and of the all that is. So again, that's our caveat. But given all of that, we'll we'll just say all of what we are going to say next, just knowing that on that ultimate level, it all, in a sense, disappears or dissipates, returns to the one. Okay. But nevertheless... In this moment, we are doing a dance in the time-space continuum. So within the time-space continuum, it is absolutely key, like we've said, to come back into the oneness, the wholeness, the totality, and the pure, complete alignment and full manifestation of the light grid that is you, that is everything, that is earth, that is the relationship between the stars, galaxies, all throughout all of time and all of space. And one component of 
what can happen as you are able to allow that coming together in a sense the the erecting of your own light grid within your being just like that log cabin suddenly coming into form in an easeful graceful easy way one thing that can happen like we said you then become this conduit the conduit that you naturally are already of earth the light of earth the being of earth the body of earth the light of the stars the light and the being of source itself the divine itself <clears throat> and this can shift so many things on many many levels within you within the world many things maybe even beyond comprehension or beyond anything that we could name because it's so subtle sometimes and so just has such profound effects throughout every layer of being. One thing that often happens, that can happen, is a certain kind of integration in the energy body and in the physical body. And there's a whole set of knowings and healing that can occur knowing of what your body needs what your being is needing just getting grounded and clear just incredible clarity all of a sudden of what is true for you on every level on any level and another component we want to name again there's infinite ways that this can shift things but another component we want to name is you can then also begin to have a, a very different relationship to time and space and of timing and of knowing and being able to see and feel the greater energetic of the intelligence of the divine. The, in a sense, you could say the divine blueprint of everything of just the the bigger picture of how time and space fits together and how that intelligence and that knowing then informs even your decision making so that's another component that we might in the future sit with again um multiple times with you because it's 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 an entire process to be in that way but in this moment we can just say that uh we will right now lead you through a very brief exercise to come into your own essence in this way and then we invite you to notice what arises, what occurs for you. What shifts do you feel physically, emotionally, spiritually, in terms of your perception of things, your cognition, How what feels aligned for you and what doesn't. And again, it can be infinite ways that it could manifest for you. So we encourage you just to listen, just to be present with your own knowing, your own truth, your own way. And we invite you to share that as well as it, as it occurs over time. So now we're going to lead you, if you would like, in a very brief, in a sense, initiatory experience 
so that you can be held to come into this ultimate divine light grid, this ultimate divine blueprint that is you already. And we encourage you, if you want more support in this, for some people, this can be absolutely instantaneous. It can be just your own, you have your own knowing, your own way of doing this. But if, if you want to be part of doing this on an ongoing basis through the whole year of 2024, the Ultimate Divine Blueprint series is a community where we are doing, we're holding the space over the course of the entire year. And for a lot of beings, having support over time is a support that is needed or called for. So you can listen into your own being if that is feeling right for you. But in any case, in this moment, what we invite you to do on a very simple level, again, whatever feels right for you, you can take a long, slow, deep breath, and we, with your permission, and only with your permission, if you would like to invite us to, we are present, and we are available <clears throat> to come and be present with you. So there are certain spirits who are absolutely ready and waiting and willing and able to be present precisely, specifically with you in this moment in whatever way is exactly in your highest, ultimate, radical, highest good and in the highest good of the all that is. <clears throat> so if you would like to invite the beings who are present specifically for you. We invite you to do that now. And if not, if you do not feel called to do that or aligned to do that right now, that is absolutely perfect also. <clears throat> so if that feels right for you and if you feel called to invite these beings to be present with you, You can now imagine and feel as these beings of light, highly benevolent beings come alongside you and you can imagine that these spindles of light, like those logs of the log cabin that have just any, any of them that have been lying dormant, that are still lying dormant, you can imagine these beings of light that are here specifically for you and just for you. They gently, powerfully, beautifully help those spindles of light that are you to rise up and to take shape, to take form in whatever way is exactly, precisely, gently, and yet powerfully in the shape of this ultimate divine blueprint that is the being that is you. So your energy body being these spindles of light typically in a human will 
often create a temple, a temple of light as the being that is you. And that temple of light has, in a sense, like a lightning rod at the crown of your head. And that may or may not be accurate for you, but in general, that is often typically what will happen when these spindles of light come into their natural divine blueprint way of being and their way of manifesting. So you can just take another deep breath and just be fully present with however these spindles of light in you are manifesting and are coming into their gentle, natural way of being as you. And you can feel how they are now coming fully, completely, totally online as the one, as the unique being, the totality, the wholeness, the gentle oneness, and perfect love that is you. You can take another deep breath and just let that anchor in. And you can feel as the light of the heart of Mother Gaia Earth sparks awake and connects with this light, the light spindles, this light grid of your own being, lights it up. And then that lightning rod coming out of your crown, if that's how it's manifesting for you, that lightning rod at your crown then is can is connecting with the light grid of the heart of source itself which also sparks awake connects in with your being through that light spindle at the top of your head the crown of your head and now you are this conduit of light of both the light of the heart of mother gaia earth the light of the heart of source itself. And you can feel your the light of your own heart, your own being, spark awake. And this third version of light now circulates, mixes with the light of the heart of Mother Gaia Earth, the light of the heart of source itself. And all three versions of light are moving in that light grid that is you, those light spindles that have become the wholeness, the totality of the light being that is you as the one, as the unique perfection that is you. And again, you can just be with this so it's like byways highways of light from the heart of mother gaia earth your whole being the light of the heart of source itself all flowing continuously easefully gently gracefully so there's a continual light flow earth body light source cosmos all as one and just breathe into that and let it flow and feel whatever you feel in that let it come alive in you
And so it is. Amen. So we now then invite you to come fully back to your body. You can rub your hands on your arms, rub your hands on your legs. And feel, continue to feel this this light grid of existence that's you and your connection to the light of the heart of Mother Gaia Earth, the light of the heart of Source itself, the light of your own heart, your own being, all communicating, all dancing, all flowing in this perfect, beautiful oneness that is you. And that is all things, that is the all that is, that's the whole time-space continuum as one, as you. And we invite you to just be with this, come into this reality whenever and if and with whenever it calls to you, just be with it over time. And again, you maybe feel called to do this entirely on your own, maybe with support of some kind, either in a group with Martha or in another group. I invite you to get the support that feels just right for you. And again, that might just be in your own relationship with the earth, with your own heart, with the spirit world, whatever feels absolutely perfect and right for you is just perfect and right. And we invite you and encourage you over time as you feel this, experience it, to also share and communicate anything that comes alive for you, either here in the comments or in a community or with a friend or with a loved one or in a journal. Because the communicating often can be part of the energetic flow and the energetic coming online of this way of being and this ener energy body remembering of the wholeness and the oneness and the totality of you and the all that is as one. So if it feels right for you to communicate in any way with any particular being or even with yourself, <clears throat> definitely encourage and offer a reminder to maybe do that if it feels right. Okay. And then as we like to end all of these kinds of guided times together we invite you now to release and let go of anything and everything that does not feel in your ultimate radical highest good and in the highest good of the all that is whatever that happens to be even if it felt good in the moment you can just let it go now let it go back to the light let it go back to source let it go back to the one and then anything that does feel in uh, in your absolute, ultimate, radical, highest good and in the highest good of the all that is, you can invite and anchor that. Let invite and allow that to anchor into your being, your own light body. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for being part of this time of great remembering.
and so it is. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> there we go. So something that's coming alive that um, I'm also feeling called to speak to. Um, <clears throat> but like the spirit world was saying, you know, I'd love to hear your anything, anything you want to share about that or how it is for you over the coming days, weeks, months, anytime, feel free to share. Um, but one thing that comes alive for me in this is, <clears throat> it's really alive in this astrology too, is that as Jupiter and Uranus are doing this dance coming, you know, coming together in Taurus, they are of course in Taurus. And so for me, when I feel that light grid uh, aligning and coming into that wholeness and that totality, what's really key for me is that the place I then come to ultimately is incredibly simple. It's not complicated. It is it's not frilly. Like there's no excess about it. It's very, it's, it's simplicity and it's simplicity as earth Taurus. And so for whatever reason, I just feel called to, to say a little bit about that. Um, and I would again, love to hear what comes alive for you. So for me, for example, lately, I've been really, um, not necessarily advocating this, if you happen to want to do this, great, but I've been really, really into uh, watching videos on YouTube of, <laughs> of um, especially three, three particular women who all live in different parts of Scandinavia. And they, their YouTube channels are so simple, like they're all about just simplicity of life in Scandinavia, like Northern, Northern, Northern Sweden and Northern Finland. And, and then another one I'm really into is a woman who lives on Svalbard. Svalbard is the big Island, you know, North of Norway. So all of these women live in places that are extremely isolated and rural and beautiful and um i was watching the one of the videos of the woman in finland today and her video was just gorgeous uh and really all it was doing was to, not really she was har hardly even talks um but she was showing how she knits she she makes a lot of her own clothing and then it's the middle of winter for her, of course. And so she was showing in the video how she snow washes her handmade clothes. <laughs> so she lays out this handmade gorgeous clothing on the snow. And so the video is just, you know, it's exquisite. It's just these beautiful handmade sweaters and things lying out on vast expanses of snow and then there's really beautiful simple music with it and um so it's like it, it it you know one thing i think of with all of that is the slow slow movement you know what i'm talking about is like this whole way of being that it's all about coming back to slowness like this and i would i would say for me it's not so much about being slow it's more about coming to the natural rhythm of our body and the natural rhythm of the earth which happens to be typically much slower than we're used to living in more of the quote unquote modern world um and yeah, there's just so many components of that. And then, and then I don't really feel right, you know, saying there's one right way, like we should all make our own clothes and wash them in the snow. That's not really my point. Um, I think that's amazing. 
um, I would love to go to Finland sometime and, you know, be in that way for sure. But that's not, that's not really my point. Um, I think, I think you probably get what I'm saying. It, it's when I come into that, that ultimate alignment of myself as that light grid, that is me and the light grid of, you know, in oneness of earth, that light grid of earth and the light grid of source itself and the light grid of the whole time space continuum. It could be natural to think that that becomes really complex and in a certain way, maybe it does, but actually it brings me to incredible stillness and simplicity and just like breathing in and out and, you know, loving, like it's been raining here and I've said this before, but February, February, March are my favorite, favorite times where I live and this today I cleaned my house and then I, um, I took out the trash <laughs> talk about simple and you know, it's, so it's just after the rain and there's eucalyptus trees everywhere. And so after the rain, it's like, I just stood there and was just breathing in the air because it smells amazing. The ocean breeze and the eucalyptus with the rain on it you know and like the whole earth is just coming alive right now here um yeah or just like being with my cat right that's another example of just she's so cute and she's purring and like last night she was sitting here on the couch with me and just being cute <laughs> and purring <laughs> that's very very Taurus like very like what else is there really ultimately? Um, so I think, so I think for me, at least when I come into that click with that alignment of the light grid of all of that, um, it also simplifies for me, my values. So values is actually another Taurus, Taurus word. What do we actually value? What do we actually need for survival? What do we actually need for contentment? What do we actually, what is contentment? Contentment is a Taurus thing too. And contentment with simplicity and with just being um, and being with the rhythms of the earth and our bodies as earth. Um. Yeah. All right. I could go on and on, but I think you get my point. Yeah. So share with me, share with us what comes alive for you when you, when you're in that place. Um, that's what comes alive for me right now in this moment, but I'd love to hear what comes alive for you. All right. Um, yeah. And if you do feel called to join anything, feel free. I'll put all the links. I'm actually, oh, the, the you know, the next thing coming up for me, I do have the two ongoing um courses the divine blueprint and the astrology course those have already both started if if you do feel called to be part of them that's okay um you're welcome and uh they very clearly mentioned that so it feels like you know maybe there are one or two more people who are really feeling called to be there and haven't joined yet um so if that's you let me know um you're definitely still welcome and, but the thing coming up, the, the newer thing coming up, it's just a one-time thing I'm holding is on March 11th, 2024. I am holding an eclipse workshop, eclipse gathering soul wisdom workshop. Um, and, and it'll be live and recorded. And what we're going to be doing is I'll be talking about the astronomy and the astrology of eclipses in general. So if you just want to learn you know, what eclipses are and what they mean in astrology in general, I will be um, talking about that. And then we'll talk about the actual two eclipses happening this season. The first one's on March 25th. The second one is on April 8th. And this the 8th, April 8th one is just off, off the chart. So powerful. And the March 25th one also is really, really interesting. Um, so we'll talk about the components, the astrological components of both of them, 
and then I will lead us in a channeled guided experience so you can feel what's alive for you. What is your soul knowing? What does your soul know about what is alive in those times um, for you? And um, yeah, and and um, and if you're wanting to to look at your own chart in terms of the this eclipse season, I do have some times available at the end of March in particular um, where I could do that with you, so you can sign up for that. Uh, and also in the eclipse workshop, I don't think we'll have time to look at every single person's chart, but if there are, you know, two or three people, two or three volunteers who want to have your chart as an example in that workshop, I'm happy to include that as part of the workshop. Um, just contact me and let me know that, that you would like to do that. And I, I, you know, again, I cannot probably look at every single person's chart, so I'm not promising that, but we can look at at least a couple ch charts and give an example of how you can feel into knowing what's probably most alive for you with regard to the, this eclipse season. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, schedule a time with me one-on-one -on -one if you want to really go into your own, your own chart, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, great. I think that's all I feel called to say right this second. Um, beautiful. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. Um, more to come soon. All right. <laughs>